This video was originally recorded May 2019 at the home of Robert and Nena Thurman. To learn more about the Force for Good class series, please visit TibetHouse.us. Uh, hello, I'm um, speaking to you today to invite you to join me later this month on uh, May uh, 25th and 6th and 7th. And um, we are having a talk and an event on Saturday. Uh, it only says May, 20, May 24th and 25th. And um, the Leilung Rinpoche, I'm very happy to announce that the Leilung Rinpoche, who is uh, the reincarnation of Lodark Namgar Gansen, who lived in the 15th and 14th centuries, and who invited Dzongkhapa and his eight disciples to visit him in central Tibet when they were on their way to do pilgrimage in India in around 1398-9, like that which would not have been a good time to go do a Buddhist pilgrimage in India, which was under Muslim rulership at that point. And the Indian monasteries had all been destroyed centuries earlier, but they didn't get that news in Tibet. So he is highly regarded by the great Tibetan lamas of the present for having urged Dzongkhapa not to uh, rush off to India with his eight disciples who just had a five-year retreat and were kind of flipped out with visions and insights and enlightened expressatories type of thing. And, uh, but told them that they would uh, manifest it to them as the Bodhisattva Vajrapani, and then requested them to stay in Tibet and work there, and that this would be much more beneficial to the Dharma and to Tibet and to Buddhism and to the future than going there and getting sick in India and visiting the ruins of monasteries. So um, so they stayed in Tibet. And uh, when I visited Gandhan Monastery some years ago, there's a re semi-reconstructed Gandhan Monastery, which was utterly destroyed in 1966. Uh, I, uh, uh, he had, they, someone had saved, or they had a Vajra and some other relics that belonged to the Lodzak uh, Kenshin Namka Gyansen. Um, and uh, all my teachers would always go like this when they would think of him or mention his name. So his reincarnation is the Leilong Rinpoche, and uh, he's, a de he's a dear friend of mine. <coughs> oh, how can I do this when I want to go online? Everybody online thinks I'm just a complete sinus, si sinus <laughs> master, you know, like sinus disaster. I'll let this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. How that can be. You can cut that? Yeah. Just, just like I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, and we're going to, and he, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, urging him to give us a Vajrapani blessing uh, in the next day. And in the evening we'll have a talk. And it also fits with uh, my, uh, he was also a great friend later, centuries later, with the sixth Dalai Lama, the young Lelo Rinpoche. And, you know, who had all these problems because he didn't want to be a monk. He had problems with the conventional monastic establishment. And the young Leilun Rinpoche was one of his, his close uh, friends. But he was very, he was younger, much younger. He was a teenager. And um, then later he wrote a wonderful book, who is mentioned by Dr. Nida, who is also coming to Menla this coming week. And so I'm having a wonderful week with Dr. Nida, and after that with Leilung Rinpoche. This month is really fun for me, and I'm hoping that you'll all join me, and um, you will meet these wonderful people. The Leilung Rinpoche, oh yeah, Dr. Nida picked up a book by the Leilung Rinpoche where he talks about lay sexuality in a way that is not part of this whole nasty thing that has been going on, where lamas are using tantric pretenses to sort of get lucky with their female students, and that's really not a good thing. And uh, however, there is a Tibetan tradition, like a medical tradition, of um, uh, sort of medical spiritual tradition of enhancing 
sexual experience within married couples or, you know, partners, and uh, which is quite a nice way. And unusually for a lama, three or four lay women purchased ago, they wrote about that. And of course, that was one of the issues about the sixth Dalai Lama, that he didn't want to be a monk because he wanted to have uh, some sensual experience, you know, like a, like a, in a more ordinary manner, not making pretense that it was somehow leading to Buddhahood, but uh, making it part of the pleasure of life, if you will, in a, in a more normal manner, which people think that Buddhists don't do that. But obviously lay people do. <laughs> they are lay people, they're families, and they they are uh, they are enjoying they try to enjoy life uh, buddhism is not uh, professionally a profession of, of suffering it's a profession of trying to make life better and, and also there's an ultimate level where uh, you really make it better and then to sometimes on the way to that you have to undergo some kind of celibacy and asceticism and things like that which are the more higher some sort of higher practices and uh, so that's the thing. Okay, so I really would like you to join me and Leila Rinpoche to give him a nice welcome, those of you in the Tibet House community here in America, and come to listen to him and visit with him with me and him and receive his blessings. Okay, thank you. This recording was made possible through the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership and the work of Tibet House U.S., please visit Tibet House U.S. online. Tashi Delek.